Hi everyone, it's me! And today, let's watch this video together! Start. Ignorance. Stereotypes. Bring culture to Hi everyone, and welcome to the next generation of Game Exchange. I'm actually quite fond of the new look, and I'm loving my new sword, the Pixel. I really like it. That's car over there. <laughs> Anywho, it's October, and that means I have to do an obligatory Halloween episode. So, what kind of scary game could I culturally analyze? Well, I thought about Amnesia or Silent Hill, but to the public, none is more feared than the dreaded Sonic 06. <laughs> Yes, the game. Okay, that was uh, okay. Hmm. Game is bad. The story is dumb. Yada yada yada. But I know there's some crazy cultural stuff in this game. Unfortunately, I don't profess myself to be very knowledgeable when it comes to Sonic. But mm, did someone say Sonic? Uh. Then allow me to introduce myself. My name is Super Psy Guy, and I did. Hi, Super Psy Guy. That's my Sonic and Sonic Bastardize, and now I do... what do I do? I don't know, does a thing, and I do the voice... <laughs> and the voice of Ronaldo on Parody Rangers! And, and, yeah, that's me, yeah. and I like Sonic, and I wanted to be on the Sonic episode. Thanks, guys and Goomba. Thank you. Great. Well, that's cool. We're actually talking about Sonic 06. <gasps> that game was made by Satan! Well, you're kind of close there, Mr. Psy Guy. Satan is definitely present in this game. The main boss of this game- EVIL! They had that stupid Cerberus thing where you had to jump and then like grind over his back and then hit him from the front and then you like grab on top of his head and run into a wall and then you had like like the wave of Mephila stuff which didn't make any sense to me you had to wait for him to go underground. What was the point of that? It was like King Boo Boo over again. I just don't understand the pure logic of any of this. And some of them Eggman machines just- oh. I did not- I didn't get- Yeah, but that- Yeah, alright. Cool down, cool down, cool down. Breathe in. Breathe out. You okay? Let's continue. The thing, Sai, they are evil. In fact, they represent some of the most evil beings in history. <laughs> really? What do you mean? Well, consider this, my energetic friend. The main bosses in this game, Iblis, Mephilus, and even Solaris, are all iconic symbols of the devil himself. For example, Iblis isn't as generic as many people may think he is. He's actually a direct take from the Islamic Satan of the same name. Here's the skin. Iblis, or Shaitan as he's also known by, is a jinn basically a being that's somewhere in the middle between mankind and angels. He thought himself far too great a being to bow down to Adam, the first human, after Allah commanded him and the other angels and jinns to do so. The Quran states, It is we who created you and gave you shape. When we bade the angels prostrate to Adam and they prostrate, not so Iblis, he refused to be of those who prostrate. Allah okay. said, What prevented thee from prostrating when I commanded thee? He said, I am better than he. Thou didst create me from fire and him from clay. Because of his atrocious arrogance, Allah casted Iblis from heavenly paradise into hell. However, Iblis pleaded with Allah to give him till judgment day to roam the earth. Allah allowed it, and he and his followers roamed the world, whispering temptations of evil into the hearts of men, women, and other jinn. While Iblis in Sonic 06 is really just the mindless, physical, destructive side of Solaris, the themes and motifs of his character match up pretty closely to the Islamic Iblis. In both, True. Iblis is a being of fire, and in both, Iblis is the bringer of doom and working toward the fall of the world. Something that might also be a correlation between the real Iblis and the Sonic Iblis comes from how the wrath of Iblis is unleashed. As stated previously, the Islamic faith believes that Iblis is a whisperer to the hearts of others, trying to get them to do bad things and sin. Perhaps it's me over-speculating, but the fact that Iblis dwelt within Elise may mirror such a concept. Iblis living within Elise, much like Islam's Iblis tries to dwell within the hearts of mankind. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 I see where you're getting at, Goomba. Mephila is one of my favorite characters, also had some pretty big inspiration. Did you know that Mephistopheles is a demon featured in German folklore? He originally appeared in literature as the demon in the Faust legend wow. that everybody knows. Everybody knows Faust. All I can think of is Guilty Gear. And he has since appeared in other works. <laughs> oh my gosh! Guilty Gear. Wow, the desk. Very nostalgic. It's a stock character version of the devil. Like, I don't know, copyright free devil. The word could derive from the Hebrew <laughs> methods meaning destroyer or toffle. Meaning liar. Toffel is short for Toffel Shakir. Shakir, she, she quit. She quit. Toffel Shakir, the literal translation of which is falsehood plasterer. 
The name can also be a combination of three Greek words, me, as in negation, phos, meaning light, and phyllis, meaning loving, making it mean not light loving, because light is dumb. Possibly pairing the Latin Lucifer, or light bearer. Mephilus is represented in the game as the dark character, lurking in and out of shadows, and constantly staying out of view, and also turning into shadow himself. Mephilus, the mouthpiece, not actually having any mouth, hilarious, never directly acting even when fighting, much like Mephistopheles, he acted indirectly, convinced Silver and Blades kill Sonic in order to release Iblis and reform, like Mephistopheles, acting on Satan's behalf to damn Faust. Mephilus works through shadows and deceit, making him live up to his borrowed name. Well. Makes sense to me, Sai. So, that just leaves us with Solaris. Indeed. But Solaris really doesn't look or seem all that satanic. Even in both of his forms, there really isn't much that would, like, directly link him to Satan. Is there? It kind of depends on how you look at the enemy. For example, and again, just over speculation here, but Solaris's six clawed fingers, six horns on his crown, and six stones on his back in that design? Oh, point taken, Goomba. 666. Or the Mark of the Beast. That has a prevalence in the book of Revelation in the Bible. He was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast, so that it could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. He also forced everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on his right hand or on his forehead, so that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark. This calls for wisdom. If anyone has insight, let him calculate the number of the beast, for it demands number. His number is 666. Right. Further on in the book, there's talk of the beast as well as a false prophet. With as little direct action yet constant talking Mephilus does, perhaps he's the prophet. And Iblis in the game, the mindless being of destruction and power, seems like a beast himself. Ah, uh, but what about Solaris' final form? If anything, he looks more angelic. Well, going back to the Judeo-Christian outlook of what Satan is, Satan himself was an angel. And not just any angel, either. He was the strongest, most powerful, most beautiful angel among them. And it was his power that created pride and the desire to become greater than man, or even God himself. If anything, Solaris' beautiful, angelic second form is an even greater representation of who and what Satan was biblically. And when you think about it, Solaris' conception even makes sense if you look at it with a religious reference. In many religions that contain God, Satan, etc., Satan's fall came from trying to challenge or become God. As strange as the story plot was when it came to Solaris' birth and the Duke trying to manipulate Solaris, it seemed like there's a parallel between stories. Indeed there are, Sai. I guess this game has more to teach us than how to not make a terrible 3D platformer. Oh yeah, this game, jeez louise. Just look up, like, Sonic goes for a walk or, or something like that, or, or here's what's wrong with Sonic 06 or something. I don't really... Anyways, I'm Super Sai Guy. You can check out my stuff on Does A Thing, or you can check it out on Cartridge Blowers. Go check them both out, because they're really, really neato. Thanks for having me on Guy Journey. It was a lot of fun. I like your stuff, and you're a super great guy. And thanks for being here, Sai Guy. Personally, I'm a big fan of Super Sai Guy Super Show. And as always, thank all of you for watching. Be sure to stay tuned to the next episode of Game Exchange. But until then, this is Gaijin Goomba signing out. Thank thanks so again, everyone, for watching. Be sure to check out my channel for other Gaijin Goomba goodies, Sai Guy's channel for more hilarity, and as always, be sure to check out the Game Theorist channel for all your mind blowing needs. And give them a sub if you like what you see. Also, don't forget, too, that there are plenty of Game Exchange shirts available at levelupstudios.com. Get yours today and be the toast of the town. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh my gosh, so much, so much stuff in this video. Thank you so much for watching this video. Mm, if you do like this video, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to my channel and comment down below if you find any share of us. Thank you so much, and don't forget to follow my channel. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you, and bye bye. But hey, that's just a game, a game exchange. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Thank you so much.